people understand that there is a, a tremendous amount of, of uh, uh, pressures that come with this job and uh, I am uh, human uh, but when you make a mistake you uh, admit it, you make amends, you, uh, uh, you ask for forgiveness and you uh, make sure it never happens again. Outrage, apologies and accusations galore in the House of Commons this week. By now, most Canadians are well aware of the so-called Elbowgate incident. Now, beyond the frenzy lie some worrying truths about the way Parliament works and important legislation such as a bill literally dealing with the life and death of Canadians could hang in the balance. That's where we begin with the Sunday Scrum this morning. Joining us in Ottawa this week, freelance journalist Susan Riley and the Globe and Mail's John Ebbotson. Thank you both. And first off, kudos for coming in on the holiday weekend. It's much appreciated. <laughs> Our pleasure. His, his garden is suffering, believe me, John. Well, and, and we will have the full attention of Canadians because they'll be completely relaxed in front of their televisions, we hope. Indeed, I'm today. sure they are. So let's start with Elbowgate and let's start with uh, with you, Susan. I, the, the apologies put me in mind a bit of uh, Mel Lastman many years ago. Of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How many times do I have to say I'm sorry? What do you think of it all, Susan? What I think of it all is that we're the last three people in the in this country probably talking about it, <laughs> and things have moved on. Trudeau's all, already en route to uh, Japan, and my sense is we won't be hearing a whole lot about this from now on. Trudeau's behavior, you know, impulsive, it's been said many times, but let's just, you know, do a wrap-up. Impulsive, uh, aggressive, <clears throat> Uh, but forgivable as long as it doesn't happen again. What hasn't been talked about very much so far, I think, is the um, is Tom Mulcair's losing it in the House, his incredible uh, burst of anger, uh, a bitterness that appeared to be way over the top in terms of what the offense was. Um, he and Charlie Angus and Ruth Ellen Brousseau, who was the, the unfortunate victim of this uh, accident, were, you know, c can be clearly seen in the video sort of trying to block Trudeau's, uh, sorry, block Gord Brown's uh, progress through the House. In other words, they were playing a, a mischief, as, as Elizabeth May called it. So they were part of setting up uh, this thing. And then the um, the outburst of, you know, wounded virtue from Mulcair, I didn't, I don't think helped them at all. I don't think the whole incident is going to help the NDP at all. My sense is they're probably going to be as wounded by it as Trudeau. Well, still, though, you're reminded uh, of an adage here. Maybe Trudeau should, knows this now. When you walk into a bar fight, you can't predict the outcome uh, because there's a lot of players involved often. John, what do you think of all this? Well, uh, good. I get to disagree with Susan. Uh, first of all, <laughs> Tom Mulcair is uh, soon to be gone, so it hardly matters um, uh, what he did. Um, I think... You're right. We're going to move on. There are way more important things to talk about uh, in the coming weeks. We will. The result of the G7, the Trans Mountain uh, Pipeline, Aboriginal issues, environmental issues, economic issues. But things stick. Uh, it reminded me of uh, when Brian Mulroney sang Irish Eyes Are Smiling with Ronald Reagan. And everyone, oh, no, man, that's, he's way too close to the Americans, too much of a suck-up. And when <clears throat> Stephen Harper shook his son's hand right at the beginning of his prime ministership, and everybody went, oh, cold, aloof, distant, can we even hug his own son? Um, this is that. We will move on to different things. People, people will remember that in a moment of tension, this young um, man from a privileged background, uh, you know, went into a group of people and grabbed someone by the arm and dragged them forward and accidentally hit somebody else. We all know that if anyone did that in the workplace, they would be fired on the spot. And from now on, Justin Trudeau will have to uh, wear that impression that has settled. He's not just the young, handsome, charismatic son of Pierre Trudeau. He's a guy with anger management issues. <clears throat> And that will just be part of, of the, the, the package, the luggage, the, the baggage that he has to carry. And yet I suppose it's worth noting that, that Trudeau's first uh, step into the limelight, if you will, uh, politically, was that, with that boxing match with Brazo that seemed to kind of... Uh, people took notice of him at that point and maybe even took him a little seriously for that. So let's look, though, at the condemnation that rained down upon his head and have a few uh, samples of that. Just have a listen. For all of us who witnessed this, this was deeply traumatic. If we apply a gendered lens, it is very important that we recognize that young women in this space need to feel safe. Anytime you put your hands on, on, on another person, whether it's a man or a woman, it's unacceptable. I guess I'm, uh, I'm emotional about it because I, I sit with Ruth Ellen and, and I think she was pretty shaken up. And I witnessed as he strode across the floor with anger fierce in his eyes and face. We expect to see meltdowns from celebrities, but not from prime ministers. 
So plenty of high horses being ridden there. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. Susan, let's start with you. Do you think that Canadians share some of what the opposition are saying about what the Prime Minister did? Uh, no, I think they're completely off base. I don't think it was gendered violence. Um, I do uh, sympathize profoundly with Ruth Hillen Brosseau. It's upsetting. Uh, anybody who's small and who's been in a bar and who's had this happen to them understands that. I, she doesn't deserve the abuse that she's been taking online. Uh, but but it was not a gendered, it wasn't violence against women. It was an accident. It was a mistake. I think it's going to stick in the public mind. I agree with John. I also agree with John that if Justin Trudeau was still a high school teacher, he'd probably be looking for work right now. That being said, I don't think it's necessarily going to play negatively in the same way that the Shawinigan uh, handshake of uh, Jean Chrétien became a kind of a joke, uh, a national joke. Um, I don't think uh, it's that devastating, quite frankly. I think, in fact, it may win him some grudging support, whether we like it or not. John? I don't think it will win him any support at all. I, again, it's pe the voter takes the event and translates it into his or her life. The Schwinnigan handshake was somebody getting in the face of Jean Chrétien and he said, you get in my face and here's what I'm going to do to you. And people went, yeah, absolutely. You, if uh, you get into my face, I'll do the same thing to you too. This is different. Uh, I, I completely agree. The, the, Ms. Brousseau uh, was um, an unwitting victim, uh, almost a collateral damage. The real problem was Mr. Trudeau crossing the floor into territory he had no right being in unless he planned to, you know, defect to the Conservative Party, uh, and grabbing the Conservative whip by the arm and pulling him forward. You can't do that. You can't do that anywhere. And you know why? Because it's 2016. We don't <laughs> do that sort of thing anymore with each other. Where have I heard that before? Uh, so, uh, John, there is still, though, uh, the, 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 uh, the background of all this was, was the, uh, the intrigue that led up to it. Let's unpack it a bit. The table was set long before uh, the Prime Minister strode across the floor, wasn't it? Yeah, look, there are, there are two groups of people right now in the, among the, the pundit class. One says that the Liberals are undoing everything that the Conservatives did under Stephen Harper, dismantling the Harper legacy, something I completely and utterly disagree with. The other group on my side says every week the Liberals start acting more like the Conservatives. And this really was the culmination of weeks in which the Liberals tried to push through their agenda, especially on the assisted dying bill, found that, oh, it's a parliament. The, result, the opposition parties have tools to slow down the debate. And then, all right, well, we have hammers that we can bring down on the opposition, and did. As Michelle Rempel said in, uh, in one tweet, even we didn't go as far as the liberals were going in shutting off debate on a very contentious bill. And that's what led to the, to the, the, the boiling over temperatures, the tension, uh, the anger and animosity that just culminated in that arm reaching out and grabbing the whip and pulling him forward. And the, the result of it is, by the way, John, a week really is a long time in politics. You know, we would, a week ago we were talking about the steamrollering of, of the liberal agenda. Now that agenda lies in tatters. The, mm -hmm. the assisted dying bill is not going to get passed in time. Um, the, the liberals uh, are revealed to be every bit as ham, you know, heavy-handed as the conservatives are. Um, and the honeymoon uh, is emphatically over about six months before I thought it would be. Okay, so the honeymoon's over. So, Susan, let's get you to weigh in on this. Is this a, a poisoned well for, for some time to come with uh, the opposition and the other... I think, the, I think the Liberals are going to work hard to restore uh, a certain civility uh, because they, uh, the, the mystery to me is what triggered them. Why did they, and we first saw this new, you know, tough, uh, top-down kind of approach uh, when it came to the electoral reform bill and the way they stacked the committee to favor their, to favor their uh, power. Um, what why did they get so impatient so quickly is what I wonder because, uh, yes, uh, you know, the opposition, if you're in government, they're, they're sort of pesky. They're a bit like black flies. You just slap them off. Uh, but they haven't really been that effective, the opposition, that is. Um, so, wow, if, if, if uh, you know, Dominique Leblanc can't tolerate this, the level of opposition and criticism he's been getting so far, which I, I would characterize as fairly mild and ineffective, uh, you sort of wonder. That being said... The most important thing that Trudeau did, apart from the multiple cascading apologies, uh, was he withdrew this very draconian Motion 6, which many people said correctly, out Harpered Harper. Um, I didn't think he'd step back from that ledge, but they did. That's a very good sign in terms of their own survival and hopefully in terms of a more collaborative uh, parliament. But it's a temporary sign, perhaps. I mean, I, I wrote this week that what this is ironically probably going to